So lovely to have all of you on Film Companion, and congratulations on Love, Sonia. It's a tough, strong film. I'm still processing. Some of those images are still playing in my head, uh, which is a good thing and a bad thing. Uh, uh, I need to know, Tabrez, um, you nurtured this story for what? 10, 11 years? Yeah, about 14. Yeah. 14 years? Yeah. Um, you first talked to Frida about it during Slumdog. What about this story sort of kept you invested? So I think that initially when I first started, it was uh, the story that interested me was about a girl who was trafficked from a village um, in the interior to Mumbai. And uh, in order to get research done and kind of know more about the process of, of trafficking and what really happens, I slowly started to get involved with NGOs. And over a period of time, what happened is I got slightly more involved with the NGOs uh, just because I was interested and I wanted to try and help them and I could because I was suddenly shooting movies in, in Mumbai and I could do undercover work for them. And as I did that, I started to meet the real girls, girls who had been trafficked, uh, men who would go in and you know, beat the Manishas and do the raids, uh, the NGO workers. And what struck me was that these girls go through hell uh, and come out even before they're sometimes 14 years old, and they triumph. It was the, it was the, uh, you know, their courage, uh, the human spirit. So I was just that was that was just fascinating to me. Also because at the same time I met a girl in LA, who was trafficked from the east, and that opened my eyes. This was no longer domestic. This was the world of international sex trafficking, and uh, from all those real life stories came the screenplay for Love Sonia. Uh, you know, and everyone keeps saying that as a director, your first film needs to be about something that you're passionate, you feel passionately about. So I figured this was the one to do. But Frida, when he talked to you and all through these years, uh, did you ever advise him like maybe first film, go for something lighter, uh, you know, more entertaining, quote unquote? Um, so you, Anupama, know the kind of films that I choose to do as well. So since none of my films are lighter, <laughs> I wasn't, <laughs> I wanted to be part of this film. So I was like, yes, let's make it. And you know, I remember asking him every year since the first year he showed me the script. When are we making this film? When are we making this film? So the, to your point about passion, I was actually just thinking yesterday on my way back home. If I think about Renal, Richard, and myself, I think all of our first projects have been projects of passion. Yeah. And, yeah. and I think you know, that's a common link that keeps us. So whether the subject matter is heavy or you know, difficult to sometimes digest, I think it's always been about doing something that is important for all of you us. You know, when I was, um, I was prepping for this interview, right, so I'm reading interviews you guys have done before. And sort of this recurring theme was what doing this film did to your heads. So Richa, you said you needed therapy. Uh, Manoj Bajpai said that he almost had a breakdown. Renal, you said like breakdowns in the plural. And, and when I saw it, I understood why that would be. But what was a day on set like? And how did you guys just get through it? Yeah, I was, it was fun. <laughs> it was I fun? Mean, yeah, it was fun even when, um, I mean, I think they consciously kept it really light. Uh, he was always... Meaning the atmosphere on the set. Yeah. yeah. Like he was always making really bad jokes from the 80s. And <laughs> our DOP was trying to keep it light, trying to talk in Hindi and do the head, head nodding <laughs> and everything. And it was, even when we shot in real locations, it was quite light. It was only like, so, like now you've seen the film, when he like he would just say that today we are filming this you're supposed to go into a clinic and that i remember in those moments suddenly like you have you suddenly feel this like rush of emotion or sort of it's like a cathartic release in those moments it's very difficult and i would imagine more so uh, from runal what's interesting also about her is that like like a slightly more sheltered upbringing like transferring job and that kind of, um, I think they just op the film really changed her also as a person. So we all needed, uh, I mean, not so much therapy. I just had to understand why, how people can do that to other people, specifically men doing that to little girls. Yeah. I had a slightly uh, interesting way of approaching this film, especially because Rashmi is a bit of an interesting character herself. Uh, I was like, this is a film project where, um, I have been, you know, involved in for the last 10 years. 
So whatever frustrations I've had for the last 10 years about not being able to make people understand the kind of roles that I want to play or personal hassles in life or whatever it is, I'm going to take it all and dump all the frustrations in, frustration into Rashmi. And I remember you know, giving her a big hug and saying, Manal, yeah, after action, it it's Rashmi, not Frida. Yeah. So, <laughs> so yeah. I, think, I think I thought about it and then I connected it to what Rashmi would have gone through. Mm. You know, this is... She has basically seen betrayal. She is basic, obviously not on the level that I'm not comparing that the kind of uh, mm -hmm. uh, negative, you know, um, feedback we'd get in terms of the kind of roles that Indian women should play in the West. I'm not comparing that to what Rashmi has gone through at all. But I'm just saying that she has also had so much betrayal, so much this, this kind of uh, being left as an outcast for her entire life, and she has to survive. So she's going to take all her frustration out on this new young thing who she doesn't think deserves to be treated like a princess. How did you change, Bruna? Well, I'm still trying to adapt or absorb what's, you know, the kind of feedback and the journey is impeccable. You know, working with the best, it's, it's actually like a dream come true. But you're really good. <laughs> you're really good and it's a first film you know it's 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 amazing like uh, what what you do there and I was just thinking about like going from uh, uh, Kum Kum Bhagya uh, which I, I confess I haven't seen but you know I have uh, you know Indian television um, this might be a, a stereotype in my no, head okay. but I always think of it as a certain type which is sort of broader louder and then to go to material like this how did you process that? It wasn't easy though, because there were a couple of times where I did get rejected because, hey, you know what, you're a television actor. Really? Yeah, sometimes. That bias is still there? Little bit. Yeah, it's there. I mean, I felt it. And uh, that's why I appreciate him even more because there are a few directors who really believe and, uh, you know, they, they have faith in new talent. So I'm quite happy about the fact that, you know, directors like Tabrez do exist. Um, the process was not easy because after television I had to take a little bit cap. I did commercials because commercial is the one where, you know, in 30 seconds you have to be a character and prove the most out of it. Um, talking about the film, uh, the audition process was not easy. This, the race. He <laughs> it just was... tells jokes, but other than that. <laughs> <laughs> it, I, it was too hard I, for me to convince him that, hey, you know what, I'm Sonia. And when the moment it happened and I read the script and I was like, the braids. I have to think. He's like, it, you can't be saying that. I fought with the Goras for you. <laughs> so, uh, but I'm glad the kind of homework that I did. Oh my God! As an actor, I feel like I've just stepped into this industry, and I'm feeling like through a character you learn so much. That one particular character, you've no idea what Sonia has done to me. I become more aware, become more mature, I've become more sensible, and I, I'm not being ignorant because. One thing that I've learned, if, if there's something happening around you which is not correct, just make sure that, you know, you raise your voice and just be like, hey, you know what, I don't like this. Or, you know, that saying no is a big deal, but I've learned this, this thing from this film. And uh, talking about the nervous breakdowns, who doesn't have breakdowns? Everybody does, right? So, um, all I had was, uh, you know, the flashes of those girls whom I met in Sonagachi uh, during the workshops and they had this bright smile while they narrated their story because they knew that, you know, Tabrez is going to make a film based on girls, you know, who should not get trafficked. So their point was, we don't want the innocents to suffer. So whenever there was a difficult scene, Tabrez, Virginia, who did my makeup, um, David and Lukash, they all sit like four pillars right next to me and say like, it's okay. You know, if we save five girls, our job is, our mission is accomplished. So that's all I had in my mind and I was just going with the flow. I just wanted it. You know, Frida, trust me, after doing the scene, even with Richa, when we were doing the scene, we were so involved in the scene and Richa would just say something and I would be like, Kya bola isne? it's not in the script. But she would say it so naturally and I was like, wow. You know, it's like, even if I go to the acting school, I would not learn this. So I feel I'm very blessed to work with Frida, Richa, Manoj, yeah, pay us. Demi. This is good. I mean, you, you learn so much <laughs> from us. Like, all her audience is a great example that we've like know. helped her so much. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but tell me, when you deal with a subject like sex trafficking, 
with material like this, how do you decide what to show, what not to show? At what point does it become exploitative? What point does it become sensational? Yeah. What do you do? So I think so. this was one of the biggest challenges. Uh, and this is where, you know, that's why I feel like nobody else could have made the film. Because I feel like you need to have been in those real places, seen the girls, talked to them, laughed with them, cried with them. Um, to not exploit the exploited. Um, because I have two NGOs involved, I had traffic girls involved at every stage. Before we made the movie, on set, while we were shooting, whether it was in Bomb in here or in Hong Kong or LA, they were around for us, for the actors, for the actresses. Uh, so I feel like we were able to navigate that line because you don't need to, you need, you can't water down the experience by not showing what they go through because that would be insulting them. And that is also why it's taken me so long to make the movie because unfortunately most people won't do what we've done because in their eyes know that it's not a commercial movie and they won't do it and we won't. We don't have that problem. We wanted to make a good movie. Yeah. But did you ever have a day on set where what you were doing was just so difficult that you wondered if you could go there? Does that happen? Or as actors, are you always willing to push was, yourself? No, it was really hard. I mean, you see in the film, there's a scene in which, um, like for me, the biggest question was, which I kept asking him, I think that if, if, a ca if my character had gone through what Sonia had gone through a few years before, how can she do the same thing to her? And then he told me, you're the only one in the Brussels with a private bedroom. It was such a small room, but it had a window. And I realized that these tiny luxuries that we all take for granted, that could be reason enough for her to f want to be a survivor in this environment, get to choose her clients and, you know, push her if she needs to, you know, trap her in a cage with a snake or whatever, whatever it is. It's, I was like, how can the oppressed become the oppressor? And he said, but that's how, that's the only way in which you can survive, live long enough. And yet, no one does. It's e either disease or like drug dependence. And it's just, it's just like a downhill slope. There's no recovering from it, at least even mentally for the people who actually live through it. It's certainly not one of those happy. I remember I watched a lot of Shin Chan and I'm like, <laughs> Really <laughs> ridiculous things to keep to my just mind. Get over it. Yeah. I was like, yeah, both of your method, yeah, I I to be honest, um I think we judge other human beings very Way easily. Too much, yeah. Very easily. And I wondered if Rashmi has gone through the betrayal that she's gone through, which she explains in the film as well when she shows her um, her damages. Um, would she behave any other way? And would I behave any other way? And I'm going to be honest, I would do exactly what Rashmi did, you know, because it is survival of the mm, fittest. Yeah. I um, was so excited to play this part that I don't think I needed mm -hmm. to go back and distract my mind from anything else. <laughs> Because I was just, it's like 10 years in the making. So, like, so I remember this one time, like, I, I was really excited too. I was like, I was working in Srida for the first time. And I remember that I was, I was like, oh, what is she wearing? Is it a sari? And just that day, our costume designer, Shahir, decided to put her in cycling shorts, a blouse, <laughs> a flower, and a dupatta. I was like, "Tu sari bol gaya kya iski?" <laughs> and he's like, "No, this is this is a this is how real it needs yeah. to be." Yeah. And I love those moments. Like he put me in a petticoat with a towel. For one day he sent me a petticoat. I said, "Where's the blouse and sari?" He's like, "No, you just had a bath. No makeup. Wear the petticoat and put a towel yeah. around." And I love that <laughs> yeah. that re absolute reality of it. The thing is, at at some point, or at least. A section of viewers will ask that, uh, why do I need to expose myself to this reality? It is brutalizing to watch, right? Uh, what would your response be? Why do people need to be aware of this? The thing is, I mean, you can choose not to be aware of it and dig a hole and put your head in the sand. But the fact is that no matter where you live in this city or any other city in India, we cannot forget that this is not a first world economy. We have people trading children for money. We have 
uh, young women who are vulnerable in the slums, it, it, it's girls from the age of 6 to 12 and 13 who go missing. So, I mean, you need to be aware so that you can help and be aware of the fact that not every man who's getting off a train holding a young girl, is that's his daughter. And we were in LA once. Yeah. Tabriz took me out for lunch and we were sitting on this, in this really posh restaurant and there was this older gentleman with the Eastern European, very young girl. And he was like, that's a sign. And you have to just be aware of society around you. I mean, you can choose not to know, but that doesn't make the truth. You can't wish the truth away. Ki nahi hota hai. I'm going to be very brutal. You have no choice. You have to know. Because you always think this can never be me. This can never be someone I love. This can never be someone I know. And you never know when, it, when that could be you or that could be someone you love. And so I kind of feel like, you know, like, Richa, you're being very kind today. I live here now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I just kind of feel this, this, as human beings, we coexist. And we kind of like live off each other and we thrive off each other in ways that we even sometimes don't understand. It's almost like if you want to live by yourself, then yeah, sure, move to the mountains and live there by yourself yeah, and exactly. be a hermit. But you can't be a hermit in a time and a place where there's so many injustices around you. We're not saying go out there and donate like one crore rupees or whatever, you know, but that's not even what we're saying. Yeah. We're just saying the basic need and the basic ask is can you just be aware of what is actually happening around you? I don't think there's an option to turn a blind eye, really. The film, of course, has gone to film festivals around the world. Uh, what's your favorite memory of response you had to Love, Sonia? I uh, remember after the screening of London Indian Film Festival, we went out for dinner and Russell's uh, friend, uh, he approached, he came and he's like, Manal, the film has done, like, I can't even explain you what it has done to me. And he was on the verge of adopting his third child and he said, I'm going to make sure that it's a, it's a survivor, it's a girl, it's a victim. I want to give her a new name, a new family and a new future. So wow. that was the moment where I was like, wow, now the mission, like the mission that I, we all were on is accomplishing, you know, it's, 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 it's one of the most beautiful memory I've, I've had. It's amazing. I mean, I really don't, I know it's overwhelming when people come to me and tell me that, hey, Mrinal, you were so good in the film, but my favorite memory still remains that one. That's so beautiful. It is. I think for me, it's like, oh, we didn't know you have such a foul mouth, you know? <laughs> so it's like, oh, we didn't know you speak Hindi. <laughs> I'm like, <"What?" laughs> For me, it was yesterday, there was a journalist, we were doing a round of press and they had seen the film and she said to me something really like, she said that, you know, why is the word prostitute an insult? If this is how women are pushed into prostitution, why do we use it like an abuse? And I was like, your world has shifted, <laughs> you know? It's such an important thing. The, the, the pimps are men, the suppliers are men, the, the demand is coming from men and we judge the women that we use. How is that fair? That's amazing. Yeah, it was yeah. really, really something. That's very insightful. And a very conservative, much older Generous. lady, yeah. I have to really say, you know, I was like really dreading the kind of press that I would have to walk into because of the nature of this film. And <laughs> I haven't done press for a very long time. But I'm going to use your platform to literally congratulate every journalist we've spoken to in the last couple of days. They have taken the effort and the trouble, and some of them, you know, who hadn't seen the film, who will now see the film, yet they've taken the trouble and the effort to go deeper than just the surface level. Yeah. And I am literally, I'm like, after this, I'm like, I want to do a lot more junkets in India, yeah. because <laughs> the kind of questions that are coming from the journalists are really blowing my mind. Yay! Yay. Yay. One for my community. Yeah. <laughs> and I have to ask, couldn't Manoj Bajpayee's character die a <laughs> and lingering death? Was there no way to make that possible since you also wrote it? <laughs> well, there's a part two. Yeah, there should be. Part two. I, I, well, yeah, yeah. Ashley's Ashley's Avenging Angel. I'm still there, there. so, so don't Ashley's worry. Ashley's taken Madhuri's place yeah. <laughs> and she's going to poison yeah. Hazel slowly. Mm -hmm. And Sonia is I have with very the Charlie's I'll Angels. Be like, I'll have some soup. 
kepal gitu kayak I'm relying on you. I have some really sinister ideas. <laughs> what you saw what I did to Sonia is just the beginning. Oh. Excellent. <laughs> Excellent. I go away a more peaceful person. <laughs> Thank you so Amazing. much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Lots of love for the movie. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. If you like this video, please subscribe to Film Combined. Like <laughs> <laughs>